Pitting a phone against another that costs almost twice as much doesn't usually make sense. But this time around, we're gonna make an exception, especially because both these phones are powered by the same Snapdragon 400 chipset. So without further ado, if this is your first time here or in case you have short term memory loss, my name is Ash. This is C4E Tech and you're watching my comparison video of the Moto G going head to head with the Samsung Galaxy Crown 2. Let's get started. First off, let's start with the build. Well, the Grand 2 is built like its newer Galaxy stablemates, metallic plastic on the sides with a fall leather plastic back, it isn't really frail premium. The sides are of noticeably lower quality than other higher priced Galaxies and make the Grand 2 look and feel cheap. The Moto G on the other hand feels well built. Yes, it's plastic but feels solid. Unlike the metallic plastic around the Grand 2, there isn't anything that makes the Moto G feel cheap in hand. And also keep in mind it actually survives minor water damage even without IP certification. So build Moto G. Now let's move on to design. Though both backs are user replaceable, the Grand 2 makes better use of it by providing a user replaceable battery and a micro SD card slot, both of which are found lacking on the Moto G. The Grand 2 is also 2.7mm slimmer and just 20 grams heavier than the Moto G given the fact that it houses a much bigger display and higher capacity battery. With the button placements being more or less similar, I'd say design Galaxy Grand 2. Now let's move on to the display. Both phones sport 720p displays. The Grand 2, a 5.25 inch TFT and the Moto G, a 4.5 inch IPS LCD owing to the smaller size, the Moto G's display looks denser. While the display on the Grand 2 is a tad brighter, colors seem more natural on the Moto G. And to top it off, the display on the Moto G is covered by Corning Gorilla Glass 3. So the Moto G takes the win and a 2-1 lead here. Next up, battery life. 2600 mAh versus 2070 mAh. While this seems an outright victory to the Galaxy Grand 2 on paper, keep in mind the Grand 2 also needs to power a much bigger display. It's probably due to this reason that both phones have very similar battery lives. But since the battery on the Grand 2 is user replaceable, which means if needed you could add a bigger battery or swap it with another a few years down the line, you could do that without having to send it in. So despite the batteries on both devices delivering similar results, we'd give this round to the Galaxy Grand 2. Scores level, 2 all. Now let's move on to what's underneath the hood. Again, both devices are powered by the same chipset, Snapdragon 400 Quad. That's 4 Cortex-A7 cores clocked at 1.5GHz each, coupled with an Adreno 305 GPU, and 1GB of RAM for the Moto G, 1.5GB for the Grand 2. The benchmark scores are really close, but the playing field is not level. Taking into account the fact that KitKat is a lot less demanding on the hardware when compared to Jelly Bean 4.3, we're gonna award the Grand 2 the win here. Pair specs, Grand 2. Two and the Grand 2 takes the lead 3-2. It's worth noting that the Adreno 305 is a decent enough GPU and manages to run most games smoothly on both devices. Now moving on to audio, here's where the Moto G shines. Not only is the audio output via the internal speakers louder, but audio via the earphones is also better. Well, it's worth noting that the Moto G does not ship with earphones included in the box. That's just not enough to take this round away from the Moto G, so scores level again. 3 all. I'm gonna let you guys hear the audio comparison yourselves. Next up, camera. If you've seen my review of the Moto G, you'd know that the camera is the Moto G's weakest link. And sure enough, the Grand 2 notches up another, another win here. Unlike the specs round, this time it's a win by a substantial margin. Pictures taken by the 8 megapixel rear camera on the Grand 2 are overall just better than those shot by the Moto G's 5 megapixel rear camera. So 4-3, the Grand 2 takes the lead once again. Moving on, here's where things get interesting. Software. Hundreds of millions of Galaxy S and Note phones have been sold world over. The debate still rages on. Smooth and fast vanilla Android or feature-filled TouchWiz, what's better? 
Well, while there's no clear answer to that question, Samsung's treatment of the Grand 2 kind of makes my job a lot easier. Here, in this case, TouchWiz on the Grand 2 is not feature filled. Samsung's removed quite a lot of features that made TouchWiz unique, just so as to not let the Grand 2 attract any potential flagship phone buyers. While the omission of features like gesture controls and air view are understandable, the omission of haptic feedback, the little vibration that you feel when you type, and a host of motion controls that even the near 3 year old Galaxy S2 has just doesn't make sense. Every premium feature barring multi-window has been removed. On the other hand, the Moto G runs an almost stock version of Android and is currently running Android 4.4 KitKat. Interesting little fact, the Moto G was one of the first non-Nexus devices to get the KitKat update. The few extra apps that Moto G brings to the table are also pretty unintrusive and get the job done. And even if that irks you, in select markets you could even get a Google Play Edition Moto G. Anyway, the Moto G with its almost stock interface feels much faster and smoother and with Samsung's pathetic track record with regards to updates, the Grand One is still stuck on Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean by the way. The Moto G blows the Grand 2 away and takes this round hands down. So we end up having to go into the final round with the scores level but unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months, you all know how this round's gonna go. So that's pretty much it, thanks a lot for what, what, you want me to do this? They know it. I'm... Um, oh, come on, man. Alright, guys. Uh, round 9. I'm gonna do it. Round 9. The desire is value. And almost everyone in the world, barring those few guys working for Samsung who came up with the idea, came up with a price for the Grand 2, know that this is an outright win for the Moto G. I mean, same chipset, same resolution. Moto G better build. Better design, better software, better camera, better audio, more RAM, but 23,500-ish, 12,500-ish, half the price. How does Samsung get this? How do they just not see it? I mean, seriously, how? So anyway, my suggestion here is to go with the Moto G. For the price that the Grand 2 sells at, you could possibly go with two Moto Gs. But then again, that's just me. What do you guys think? Do you agree or do you have a different point of view? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Either way, if you want to pick up either of these devices, you can do that from Amazon. I'll leave links right below the like button in the description. And yes, I'd make a bigger commission if you go with the Grand 2, but I seriously suggest you not to. But if you still insist, please do use my links. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys, hope you liked the video, if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button right below. Once again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys soon in the next one. Till then, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye bye now.